happy Aloha Friday and welcome to a brand new episode of Perspectives on Global Justice Think Tech Hawaii. So please join our guests Hazel Pio Hudson and Blanche Bruce Head for part two of Wolf Child, a story of truth, bravery and reconciliation. The first part of the show was aired on April 12, 2019. And on today's episode of Perspectives on Global Justice, we will learn about Hazel's marvelous experience as she received an award from the Truth and Reconciliation Commission of Canada earlier this month for the story that she authored. And we will also have a chance to give continuity to a lovely conversation and, uh, you know, check in with Blake a little bit about um, and benefit from her perspectives and wisdom as an elderly indigenous woman and advocate and how this special intergenerational and intercultural friendship that she and Hazel have been able to foster and nurture over these past months have impacted their lives and of course we will get to hear their perspectives and plans on how they can continue to support each other as they continue to reflect learn and engage others to find deeper and renewed appreciation about where we all come from, including our differences, and to support individual and collective healing and conciliation, one wounded heart and community at a time. On that note, welcome back to Perspectives on Global Justice, darlings. Hi. Hello. Hello. It feels like it's been too, for, forever, but here we are again for part two. Thank you so much for agreeing to join us again. Um, and so, well, famous people, but I'll start with Hazel now, who is like, you know, big short now in Canada. <laughs> I'm teasing you, but, you know, it's quite remarkable and very special uh, honor that you have received uh, earlier this month. So do you mind talking to our viewers a little bit about what happened and uh, what was this uh, award all about? Sure. All right. So basically, I went to Winnipeg May 1st to 3rd and i was learning about reconciliation and i was with about 15 other honorees um, from every province of canada and um the first day we went to fort gibraltar for a feast and it was great food i have to say and then the second day we went to turtle lodge and we got to listen to drumming and prayers and songs um, and we listened to some speeches from um, residential school survivors and um, the held el elder there. Um, and a film group came that day called Wapi Coney. It kind of sounds like walking pony, but reversed. <laughs> and um, we basically, they come to your community and they will film your story um, and you can just tell your story to them and they make it a video. And th the third day, we did a gift exchange of um, basically just um, gifts that are in um, Aboriginal custom. And um, we, all the honorees did a speech. And um, after that, that was it. And I really, it was really exciting for me. And I really liked Turtle Lodge. That was my favorite place there. Oh, that's really sweet. Blanche, were you there? Oh, no, no. Um, this was um, set up by the uh, Cree Nation, the people of the Cree Nation in uh, Manitoba, Winnipeg, Manitoba. And uh, so it was uh, uh, their, their due that uh, Hazel was, uh, and the other honorees were invited to. Right, okay. So Hazel, um as you got uh, your uh, uh, award as an honorary, um, I, I wonder, like, if you can tell our viewers about uh, this trajectory a little bit from, you know, looking at a sign at the library and entering, you know, in the writing contest, and now that you've uh, written your story and it's published, and now you know you've even you know, got honored for it. What's the next steps? What happens now with your story? What happens with reconciliation and truth in Canada and in your community? 
<clears throat> well, basically, I don't know how exactly I went from looking at the posters being selected, but I do know that I did put a lot of hard work and effort into Wolf Child, and I think it really helped to go the extra mile to ask Blanche, um, a survivor of residential schools, um, like what it was like to be in the schools and um, asking her for feedback. and. Um, I'm really excited that that happened, and I, I think my next step is to um, create more art and stories to help people like heal um, worldwide and just create more empathy in the world as well. Mm -hmm. That is a big thing from uh, uh, having this idea uh, to actually having a story created and such a beautiful legacy of creating empathy in the world uh, and uh, you got you know new friends along the way and uh, uh, Blanche I have a question for you I know that and the first time that uh, Hazel uh, read uh, uh, Wolf Child story to you that you had quite a lot of feelings uh, expressed right there and I'm sure that over the months you've had uh, a lot of opportunities to process uh, you know, what you felt and what you heard. Do you mind sharing that with us? Um, when Tim, um, I call him Tim the blacksmith, first called me in, at my home and asked if uh, Hazel could come and uh, read the story to me, I thought to myself, ah, you know, um, it, it's not a, it's, it's not going to be um, something that's going to keep bringing things back up in my memory. Mm -hmm. Boy, was I wrong. Uh, the way that Hazel wrote her story, it was, um, it was, to her, it was what she imagined what it would be like. But the thing was, there was so many um, what we call small, um, points that she touched on that were so similar to what I went through as a residential school, um, as a person in the residential school. And um, since this adventure started, this journey with okay. Hazel and um, me kind of on, the, on a parallel path with her, um, I've it's, it has made me look at my, um, the time I was in residential school uh, from a, um, not just from my own point of view, but through Hazel's eyes too. So um, it's hard to explain um, because these things are based on feelings and the, the thoughts that come from those feelings um, going through the, the, the experience of being a, a survivor. Mm -hmm. So uh, for the both of you, and I don't know who wants to answer that first, um, for, I guess I will rephrase that. So I, I will ask that question first for Hazel and then uh, to Blanche. Hazel, when you wrote your story, uh, did you imagine at any time that um, you would be able to foster uh, so many, you know, emotions and open Pandora books uh, of, you know, feelings and memories in, in people's lives who have been so deeply impacted by, um, you know, what Blanche have experienced, you know, in the formative years of her life, pretty much for the rest of her life, because it was such a deep, um, uh, you know, part of, you know, who she is and, and how she was, you know, raised. Well, I can say that I was definitely nervous to meet Blanche. I was very afraid that I would upset her or offend her or, um, in any way bring up emotions that she didn't want to think about again and I thought about it a lot um, like leading to that day and I was very nervous but it was so rewarding for me after that I just 
felt so much better. And I think we really connected and I'm so happy that I was able to meet with her and she gave me like great feedback. I'm so grateful that we met that day. Yeah. That's wonderful. And so Blanche, for you, I mean, you already said that you really didn't think much of it, you know, before you uh, had uh, exposure for the first time, you know, with uh, Rehazel's story. Um, you know, like, I don't know for you as a person who have survived and endured all that you had to uh, in your formative years. And um, were you, you know, really... Um, you know, at a place emotionally and even in terms of willingness in this, you know, part of your life in 2019 uh, to revisit those memories and perhaps through, you know, different lenses besides yours. <laughs> Going through uh, from, the, from the time that um, Hazel and her family came into my field of vision, which is very, very, you know, close. Uh, go, starting from that point on, um, I came to realize, and I have Hazel to thank for this, uh, um, I came to realize that um, out of sight, out of mind is, doesn't really work that all that well. Uh, and uh, whether Hazel realizes this or not, um, my parallel journey with her on because of this um, process that she started, it's helping me deal with some of the things that I did endure uh, in the sense that um, uh, bringing them even when I'm by myself and I, I think back, you know, and I, I, th those experiences come, like I come face to face with them again, being not forced, but uh, coming face to face with them. I myself uh, am going through healing. Mm -hmm. So I have a lot to be thankful uh, to Hazel, uh, for bringing front and center, not necessarily every minute of the day, but when it does enter my mind, um, uh, I'm, I, I'm still going through the, the process of, yeah, of the, process. yeah, and the, the, the reconciliating for myself on a very personal level um, and work, working towards uh, healing, you know. Mm -hmm. So this little girl in her innocence and in her inquisitiveness and in her curiosity and her ability to use language um, is bringing me, you know, along right. uh, on my own journey uh, to the point of um, beginning, you know, starting, you know, continuing the healing that I'm doing on my own, but this one adds to, uh, adds to that. And then the, the fact of, um, uh, with, through her, like she said, um, bringing empathy into this world. Mm -hmm. uh, and I mean, that is just so amazing. And, uh, um, Hazel, as a writer, we always hope that we will touch someone's heart and minds, you know, just a little bit. And if we touch one soul, we've done our, you know, job. And uh, you have apparently, you know, created such, you know, an amazing, uh, uh, you know, cascade of uh, feelings and, and, and changes in a person's life already and uh you know through your lenses and through empathy so uh my question to you is so what are you going to do and what does uh the nations will do with your story is there any plans on how to share um the work you've done uh, with orders of your age and of different uh, uh you know age groups to 
uh, so that we can go back to that place uh, from deep wound to also the, the recognition of the wounds, but also the empowerment uh, and the courage, you know, to continue that healing journey that is just a long lifelong experience, you know, like look at uh, Blanche, you know, she's at least, you know, 30 years old and <laughs> you know, she's still walking with, you know, things. And so, um, so tell us what's going on, what's next, you know? Sure. All right. So I'm not exactly sure what the center is going to do with my story, but I know um, they, uh, the teaching, uh, sorry, Westwind Alternate School in um, Cardston in Southern Alberta. I know um, some teachers are using Wolf Child as um, a reference to like a teaching tool for their students. And um, I know that um, there's a group um, of grade nine and grade 11 students that are reviewing my story and reading about it. And they're giving me feedback as well, which is really cool for me. I didn't know that it would like that, that would happen. Mm -hmm. And um, I know I did meet three people um, in like my time at um, like Turtle Lodge and the fort. And um, there's three honorees that I met that I'd like to share my story with, and we exchanged emails, so um, I'd like to share with them. And um, I think, like, as I meet more people, I just want to um, share Wolf Child with, like, anyone who needs healing or is um, trying to reconcile with themselves, because um, it's important, like, we reconcile with ourselves and reconcile with the earth. Um, before we start to reconcile with others. And um, I think like teaching others about residential school and what happened in them, even though I haven't been there um, and just created the story, I think that's a part of reconciling with myself as well. Um, yeah, that's all I have. <laughs> Sounds like a good idea then and good seeds planted and that, uh, um, you know, you're getting, you know, the expo people to be exposed to the story as a tool to walk towards um, conciliation and reconciliation with self and, mm -hmm. and earth and, uh, and with each other, hopefully. Mm -hmm. uh, Blanche, do you have any uh, plans behind the scenes as an Indigenous leader and, and you know, in your community on uh, how to continue to uh, engage uh, youth and others of your generation uh, with Hazel uh, towards this beautiful uh, uh, journey towards uh, reconciliation and healing? Yes, I do. But I probably would have to fight um, Hazel's parents. Oh, <laughs> uh -oh. <laughs> um, there are so many of my people to uh, whom I'd I'd love to bring Hazel to and have them uh, sit and talk with her. A um, few years back, I uh, met a group of uh, First Nations women. And uh, they introduced me to the um, concept of angels walking among us from the native point of view. And uh, I'd like to dub that on uh, Hazel. She's one of the angels that walk among us. Uh, because we have never, the Indian residential school process has never been uh, broadcast that like I was talking with Hazel earlier on but like the Holocaust was audio and visual that was not done for the Indian residential school so it is now starting to be looked at and coming from a um, a very straightforward um, like I said innocent uh, innocent uh, uh, point of view points of view uh, uh, Hazel's points of view um, is just one of the many tools I hope um, that my people find not only from First Nations but as well as non-natives 
um, th that these tools that uh, are now coming to be collected uh, to be used for um, the the, recon the reconciliation of uh, the people that survived Indian residential schools, such as myself. Right. Well, I really hope that uh, the ripple effect of what got yep. started will continue to, <laughs> you know, keep strong and growing and expanding and reaching, you know, as many communities and as many hearts as possible. And uh, I'm going to go back to uh, this beautiful relationship that was uh, created this friendship that you both have, mm -hmm. uh, you know, and uh, the story was the catalyst, but it sounds like there is much more to that that ties you two together. And uh, um, so Hazel, uh, when, when you wrote the story, I know that you did some research about, you know, what was it like, you know, to uh, be in, in a school uh, in, in the way that Blanche was, uh, and, and maybe part of what Indigenous people have experienced in Canada. But since you wrote your story, um, you know, what, what else have you learned that you didn't realize then? And, and how much of that really... Um, uh, you know, helps you as you continue to um, think forward about uh, reconciliation and, and healing and empathy. Well, before like writing Wolf Child and before my research, I didn't really know about residential schools. In in school, we like we learned about Orange Shirt Day and we did like a little blanket exercise and. That was the only time that I learned about like residential schools and what the government did to um, like indigenous people. Um, I don't know back back then. And um, this year, grade six is pretty much my first year really learning about what happened because it is such um, such a buried conversation. We um, we don't talk about it a lot, and um, I think that it's really important that like positive and negative and neutral sides of like the argument of this, the conversation of this. I think we as people should all talk together with respect and no shame at all. Um, whether people have had a good experience in the schools, um, there should be no shame that they feel that they enjoyed it, or if they didn't, um, we should respect that they need to heal. And um, I think, like, I, it was surprising for me to learn about what happened. I just felt so regretful when I learned, like, um, people were so mistreated. But um, I really feel hope for the future, and I really want to contribute to that hope that I have with um, art and writing um, for people and just to he help heal and accept what happened and move forward from that. Mm -hmm. So Blanche, <laughs> going on that uh, uh, energy, you know, of um, how do you, as a survivor of uh, um, this horrific experience, it sounds like you did not really enjoy it much. Um, how do you reconcile and heal and move forward? I believe it all, um, it all comes from within an individual. Mm -hmm. I'm very fortunate that I had a really strong grand uncle who raised me from the complete Blackfoot way of life, ways of life. Because of that is where I get my strength to, to walk this earth as I have for the last going on 70 years. Uh, I'm grateful for that. Um, and when 
our neighbors for the last two, three hundred years, when one or a few of them actually look and see and learn and like Hazel says, to sit and talk in respect of what what went down, what happened. Uh, that's where my hope for a better future for my great grandchildren uh, in this area. And I'm sorry, but it's uh, it's a. Uh, Sometimes it really looks hopeless and emotions come in like mine are happening right now. Um, but again, going back to my dad, my grand uncle dad, um, he told me there will never be the way things were before they came. So learn to live amongst them to the best of your ability uh learn what they have to teach you and do your best to teach them what you know and that's what i do as a uh, blackfoot cultural interpreter at the galt museum and archives here in lethbridge that's the job i took so this exchange is ongoing and uh, obviously um, the, the moving forward uh, is going to be, uh, you know, a, an invitation for you. And I think for anyone who undergoes uh, deep trauma, I think that even when we accept uh, what has happened to us, uh, it doesn't mean that something is uplifted you know from our hearts and our minds to the extent that it's erased you know but i i wanted to uh, complete our program today with a quote uh, for the both of you uh, from uh, one uh, i think of the most inspirational american uh, people uh, of you know perhaps even uh, uh, Blanche's uh, time, uh, uh, Mr. Rogers, Fred Rogers, he, ex he spent most of his life uh, devoted to working with children and feelings. And so the quote goes, uh, that goes like this. So anything that's human is mentionable and anything that is mentionable can be manageable. When we can talk about our feelings, they become less and less overwhelming less upsetting and less scary the people we trust with the important talk can help us know that we are not alone and i want to leave the both of you you know with that thought and uh and with a deep deed of gratitude you know for both of your willingness to uh, share your truth and talk about it, even when it's painful, even through tears and red faces and, and emotions, you know, that is what brings us all uh, back to our core center of humanity and to our hearts and to that place of warmth and empathy um, that distinguishes us from many older, you know, beings. And, uh, and I hope that we can uh, get together in the future, you know, and continue this conversation. But uh, I want to thank you. Is there anything you would like to tell us, uh, Hazel and Blanche, before we say our goodbyes? <laughs> I think I think we're good. What about David? I just want to say thanks uh, yes, to thank you, you, Beatrice, uh, for making this possible. You know. Uh, uh, and uh, take care of yourself and uh, if you're ever in Lethbridge look us up <laughs> <Yeah>. absolutely <laughs>
things by then. It is all about perspectives and I'm just so grateful that the two of you have shared uh, your perspectives with our viewers and enriched their lives in my life in our hearts as a result. Well, this concludes our episode of Perspectives on Global Justice Think Tech Hawaii for today. Uh, we hope to see you uh, in two weeks, uh, we hope.